Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this regime to the com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the Intel Xeon E2100 service, specifically news from the website Surf the Home that there will indeed be an 8-core Coffee Lake variant on this entry-level platform. Now, of course, this platform is based on the 1151 socket and does tally up with previous rumours that we will indeed see Intel bump the core count from 6 cores up to 8. There have been a lot of rumours concerning the Z390 platform as well as 8 core processors as well recently, of course. Now, according to Serve the Home, it would appear that we're actually going to be seeing the Xeon lineup of processors after the desktop processors. In fact, they don't expect the Xeon lineup to start appearing on shelves until probably some point within the fourth quarter, whereas the third quarter is likely the targeted release date for the eight core coffee lakes. From what we understand, these, of course, are going to be on the ninth generation series and will offer things such as higher clock speeds and, if reports are to be believed, also are going to be soldered as well, which would at least in theory keep temperatures down and thus be excellent for overclockers. These 8-core Coffee Lake processors will in fact still be compatible with the platforms which launched with the E2100, so you won't need to worry about uh, incompatibility issues or anything like that. NVIDIA's Turing architecture is a complete mystery. For one, we don't even know for certain if the architecture is going to be known as Turing, and we don't know whether it's going to be 11 series, whether it's going to be the 20 series, or much details about the specifications. There is certainly a lot of guesswork that we can uh, put out there, particularly given some rumours and leaks and what we've seen regarding Volta, we can certainly presume some of those features are going to find themselves in consumer-level cards. But there is yet another alleged benchmark going around the internets right now. You might recall just a short while ago we saw the 2080 Ti or Ti benchmark, which is almost certainly a fake. But now we have another one, and this one is uh, 3D Mark Firestrike on the GTX 1170. I'm going to go into the specifications or alleged specifications and performance, and then I'm going to give my opinions whether I believe this is fake or not. You can see that it is indeed touted to be the GTX 1170, features 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and the graphics card is clocked at 2512 megahertz, and the memory is clocked at 2552 megahertz. This would put it at 10 Gbps for GDDR5, or 20 Gbps if it was GDDR5X or GDDR6, which is just, well, not going to happen. Therefore, once again, we're going to be looking at GDDR5. Uh, 16 gigabytes of memory, that makes sense. That's a 256-bit memory bus. It's very unlikely that we're going to see a wider memory bus. Therefore, they can't go with 12 gigabytes of RAM. It's almost certain that we're going to see 256-bit for either the 1180 or the 1170. And don't forget, they can't have different memory bus widths for the 1170 and the 1180, simply because, well, they share the same core. I mean, technically speaking, they could have like 256-bit and 192-bit or something like that, but it's very unlikely, let's just put it that way. Uh, the problem is, well a lot with this uh, with these specifications. The GPU clock speed of 2500 MHz doesn't actually raise that many eyebrows. A lot of people are saying that this is the reason they think it's fake. They feel that the clock speed is just too high. I don't think that's the case. I mean, let's put it this way. It's a 12nm process and we've seen that 16nm GeForce GTX 1080s can go up to like 2100 MHz plus. And on top of that, Nvidia are, at least according to the rumors, doing a lot of stuff to increase the clock speeds even further. So I can give that the benefit of the doubt without a question. In terms of performance then, we're looking at a fire strike score of 22,989 and the graphics score of 29,752. So there's a question then, does this benchmark hold any water? Is it a fake? In my opinion, it is almost certainly a fake. In fact, if I had to put money on it, I would say that it's like 99.9% .9 sure a fake. There's several reasons I feel that this is the case. And I'm going to be addressing this because I know that this image is going to spread around the internet like wildfire. The first reason that it's a fake is it's an off-the-screen camera shot. Um, now, obviously, that's not a dead giveaway. For example, you could argue that someone in a laboratory somewhere, for example, an AIB partner or whatever, 
you know, they just kind of walked past the screen, took a quick snap, and then posted it on a forum or whatever, and that's how it went. But it does certainly increase the likelihood of it being fake. Another thing that's suspicious is if you were to Google the driver revision 24.21.13.9836 is actually part of Microsoft's update catalog. And you can find them listed for the Quadro series, the GT1030 and so on. The point is you would not expect someone using one of these cards to be using this driver revision at all. Another issue is that the scores themselves just don't add up at all. You can actually use various calculators on the internet to actually figure out what 3D Mark score you should get total based upon the other scores. So for example here, if you were to look at the score um, that they're getting, if you combine all of the different uh, results, which include obviously physics and all the other bits and pieces, you'll see that they're scoring 22,989. But according to calculators, they are scoring 24,507. Now, it should be noted that I did actually test this calculator with a couple of our own 3D Mark results that we're running with our own test systems, and, though, and the calculator got it right every single time, including with an i7-8700 and a GTX 1080. If I put the scores in, it nails the result each and every time, which tells me that this is completely and utterly inaccurate in this instance. Another reason that I feel that these are illegitimate results is because we're seeing it from a forum Fraz PC and there are no links to any sources or any of that stuff. Now that doesn't necessarily preclude the chance that you can have a genuine result there. It could be that a member, for example, works at NVIDIA or works at, I don't know, Dell or whatever, and they have access to these cards. That's certainly not a you know, strike against it necessarily. The fact that it's an actual image off of a screen and just the amount of VRAM that we're seeing. I, I mean, VRAM prices are really expensive right now. They've actually gone up a lot, which is another reason that we might uh, see a really weird situation with the GTX 1170s. I wouldn't be surprised if we do still see eight gigabytes of RAM because of the pricing for this memory. It's like 23 bucks or something like that for GDDR6. We actually saw that just a, just a few days ago. We actually covered that very topic. It's like 23 dollars for one uh, gigabyte of GDDR6 memory, which obviously means that if you're putting eight gigabytes of memory of this stuff on, it's going to raise the price a lot. But when you're putting 16 gigabytes of memory on, uh, on a 256-bit bus, then obviously prices are going to be even more expensive because, well, obviously you're going to need larger capacity for the for the module. You get the idea. It's just going to raise the price up way too much for the GTX 1170. And honestly, the prices of the graphics cards are probably going to be up a little higher anyway because of what we're dealing with in the MSRP situation. It's just most likely uh, going to be incorrect. The results, though, I wouldn't be surprised if they are roughly on the level that you would expect. So if you were to look at the results, the actual graphics score itself, it is roughly in line with what you would expect. It's roughly uh, a couple of percent, within a couple of percent, should I say, faster or slower than a GTX 1080 Ti. I say within because obviously you've got things such as, is it a custom model? What is the overclock and all that stuff? But generally speaking, it's a little faster than what you would expect for an 1180 Ti or Ti if you prefer which I do suspect is going to be the case with the actual genuine 1170s or 2070s or whatever they end up being called. I do genuinely believe that those cards are going to be a little bit faster than the TIs just because it makes sense. It seems to be NVIDIA's motors operandi in the past and I suspect it will continue to be so in the future. Of course this most likely means that the uh, 1180 is probably going to decimate the 1080 as well as the 1080 Ti. But this is, of course, just an assumption. We don't know exactly what Turing is going to be bringing to the table. My predictions, once again, is it's going to be a derivative of Volta. I'm almost certain that we're going to be seeing some major changes so that it's more focused on the gaming market, no GDDR. We're going to be seeing GDDR6 rather than HBM2, for example. We're going to see uh, double floating point performance go down and almost assuredly we're going to see some other changes as well, possibly the reduction or the complete removal of tensor cores or possibly they're going to be tweaked more in line for what would be used for NVIDIA's RTX technology aka their support for ray tracing. 
Now we're going to move over to a piece of AMD news, specifically known as Picasso. About 10 months ago, there was a slide that emerged online which detailed a slew of different SKUs that AMD was supposedly going to be working on. One of those is Metassi, which is a Pinnacle Ridge successor. It would be based on Zen 2 microarchitecture, and the slide also listed Pinnacle Ridge as the Summit Ridge replacement, of course, which has just recently occurred. But we also see Picasso, and this would be Raven Ridge's successor. And rather interestingly, the Radeon Picasso has actually been discovered in the user benchmark database, and its device ID is 15DD8. Now, just for reference, Raven Ridge, its APUs carry a device ID of 15DD. Unfortunately, there are no benchmarks yet, and we don't have any details at all regarding the specifications, the performance, or anything like that of the device. And of course, the release date is still unknown. But what this does do is, at the very least, add some credibility to the leak that occurred about 10 months ago. It's certainly not confirmation by any stretch of the imagination, but I wouldn't be surprised if this does turn out to be accurate. After all, the fact that this does uh, pop up when it hasn't done so in a while, and the fact that AMD, of course, are rolling out these additional SKUs right now, and the development roadmap is coming along. After all, we do know that Zen 2's development is going along very well indeed, at least according to the company itself. The existence of this product would not surprise me at all. And now we're going to finish the video with something a little lighter, and that is Satya Nandela from Microsoft. And he has doubled down on Microsoft's commitment to gaming, and of course the Xbox division as an extension of that. He's actually said that the gaming sector of Microsoft has actually passed a revenue of over 10 billion US dollars, which is quite a chunk of change. The CEO said, and I quote, in gaming we're pursuing our extensive opportunities from the way games are created and distributed to how they're played and viewed, surpassing 10 billion in revenue this year for the first time. We're investing aggressively in content, community, and cloud services across every endpoint to expand usage and deepen engagement with gamers. The combination of Xbox Game Pass subscription and Mixer are gr driving record levels of growth and engagement. Furthermore, he mentioned that PlayFab accelerates our vision to create um, a class platform for the gaming industry across mobile, PC, and console and the addition of five gaming studios bolster our first party development to growing our fast growing gaming services. He also said that in gaming, we expect uh, mid-teen uh, revenue growth with continued strong user engagement on our platforms and software and service growth rate with moderate will moderate due to a strong third party titles launched a year ago. Now, from my point of view, I do believe that Game Pass is one of Microsoft's crowning jewels right now, and it is a superb value proposition. Assuming Microsoft can put more titles on it, the acquisition of the five studios that they announced at E3 2018 was a stroke of brilliance at Microsoft, and we can tell that they are getting ready for the next generation. Michael Pachter believes that the PS5 will launch after the next generation Xbox, I'm still not 100% on that. Microsoft releasing the Xbox next generation would make sense. After all, you can argue one of the reasons that the 360 was so successful was because it got the, the jump on the PS3, but also Sony certainly didn't help themselves. There were a myriad of issues with the PS3 on launch. It was a lot harder to develop for. The processor was more powerful than Xbox 360s, but the GPU was a nightmare. The memory segmentation, where it had 256 uh, megabytes for the GPU and 256 megabytes for the RAM, the actual main system as well gobbled up too much of the resources, and Sony actually subsequently lowered the overheads in, uh, in uh, updates. They also had really bad SDKs, and of course, the really bad issue was the fact that the PS3 itself launched at such a high price point. You combine that with the fact that it hit markets around a year after the Xbox 360, and it was a recipe for disaster. Honestly, it's very impressive that Sony managed to claw it back. As for Microsoft, whether they are going to launch the Scarlet after the PlayStation 5 or before the PS5, one thing is abundantly clear. Microsoft are having no 
quarter this time. They are really pushing the fact that they've got the first party studios uh, in line and working hard. But the question is, of course, can they deliver? The studio is doing all of this stuff. And in my opinion, one of the things that uh, is a crying shame is the fact you've got Rare really working on Sea of Thieves, and I don't think it's the best usage of the talent of that studio. That's my opinion. If you love Sea of Thieves, hey, that's all good. I'm, I'm happy for you, but in my opinion, Rare could do so much more cool stuff. I would love to see an inst um, a sequel to Killer Instinct or a completely new IP or whatever from Rare. After all, they've got so much talent at that company. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I was so happy when I saw the new Gears of War. I, I, I mean, yeah, I was basically crying with joy. It just looks so bloody good. But I do want them to also put out more titles as well. And the delays with Crackdown, and we're also hearing that there are issues with multiplayer on uh, Crackdown as well. Let's just see how it all goes. I do feel that Sony have certainly won this next, uh, this current generation of systems, but the next generation is all to play for. And are we going to see Microsoft come swinging? I hope so, because obviously competition is what breeds innovation and great gives us great gaming experiences. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.